All right, in this video, we want to find the intersection of the three planes given over here. The first one and the third one are given in Cartesian form, but the second one is given in vector form, so we do have to convert it into Cartesian form. The first thing I'm just going to do is I'm going to reorganize my two Cartesian equations to make sure that the constant is on the other side, and then I'm going to use a matrix to solve it. So it's x plus 4y minus 2z equals to negative 6, and 3x plus y minus z also equals to negative 6. So I just move the plus 6 in both these equations to the other side. I want to get a similar form of this for my second equation here. So I'll start by just cross multiplying my two direction vectors. There are multiple different ways that people do cross multiplication, but I'm just going to do it this way. I start by hiding the first column and I cross multiply there. So my x coordinate is 0 minus 2. 0 times 3 minus 2 times 1, which is just negative 2. My y coordinate is 1 times 3, which is 3 minus 2 times 0, which is 0. And then you want to make the whole thing a negative just for the y coordinate. It's going to be negative 3. Then my z coordinate is. Just hide the third column. So I have 1 times 1, which is 1, minus 0 times 0, which is 0. So these are the a, b, and c. This is basically the cross multiplication of these two, which are my a, b, and c for my Cartesian form. So I'll we'll stop by just writing the regular equation here in Cartesian form of a plane. Then I'll replace a, b, and c with my x, y, and z values that I've calculated here for the normal vector. So negative 2x, oops, minus 3y, plus z, because c is just 1, plus d equals to 0. So now all I have to do is solve for d in this equation. If I look at the equation of this plane over here, there's no point given, which means that this plane passes through the origin 0, 0, 0. So if you want, you can sub it in. But if you ever pass through the origin, your d value is always 0, because in the end, this will be 0, 0, 0, and then plus d equals to 0, which means that my d value just equals to 0. Again, anytime you pass through the origin for a line or a plane, your C value or D value is always zero. So now that I've found my D value, I can rewrite my equation just as negative 2x minus 3y plus z equals to zero. I'll put that down over here. So we have all three planes together. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in a 3 by 3 matrix. I'm going to solve that matrix to basically find my solution for the intersection between these three planes. So I'm just going to use all my coefficients there. Hopefully you know how to create a matrix. So it's 1, 4, negative 2, then negative 6. My first equation, 3, 1, negative 1, negative 6. And negative 2, negative 3, 1, and 0. So now I want to solve this matrix. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these into zeros over here. So I'm going to do r2 equals to r2 minus 3r1. And for row 3, I'll do row 3 equals to row 3 plus. 2R1. So using the first row, I'm going to eliminate these two values in my second and third row. Let's do my new matrix. My first row does not change at all. So now I'm going to do this calculation here for my second row. I'll get 0, 
negative 11, 5, and 12. Now do the third row calculation and I'll get 0, 5, negative 3, and negative 12. Okay, next I want to eliminate this value over here. Unfortunately, 11 and 5 are not multiples of each other, so this is going to be a huge calculation. I'm going to do row 3 equals to 11 times row 3 plus 5 times row 2. Again, I'm not really going to explain how to solve matrices in this video because that's not what this video is specifically about. You should already know how to reduce a matrix um and solve a matrix for this video right here first two rows are going to be exactly the same nothing changes over there now the third one is going to be zero zero negative eight negative 72. So now I'm just going to use this to solve my mat matrices using equations. You're not really too bothered with getting into reduced row echelon form. So if I look at the last one over here, negative 8z equals to negative 72 divided by negative 8 on both sides means that z equals to nine. By the way, it already looks like we're going to get a unique solution here, which means we're going to probably have point of intersection. In this question, I'll use the second equation here to find my y. So negative 11, y plus five, z equals to 12. Negative 11, y plus, I know my z is nine. Five times nine equals to 12. Negative 11, y plus 45 equals to 12. Negative 11 y equals negative 33, which means y just equals to 3. Then I'll use the first equation to solve for my x. So x plus 4y minus 2z equals negative 6. x plus 4 times 3 minus 2 times 9 equals negative 6. x plus 12 minus 18 equals negative 6 x minus 6 equals to negative 6. If I add the 6 on the other side, x just equals to 0. So because I got a unique solution for x, y, and z in this question, it means that there's a point of intersection between these three planes, and the point of intersection is just 0, 3 and 9, that's the x, y, and z values that I calculated from the matrix. If you made it to the end of this video and you found this content helpful, please hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.